Princess Avery was put into a deep sleep by the Dark Fairy. Her father, King Elliot, was told by the Dark Fairy that the only way Princess Avery will ever wake up is if someone can give her true love's kiss. And so he went in search of someone who can fulfill such a thing. His prize for whoever could wake up his daughter was to have her hand in marriage. He wanted to know though how big the possibility was that he wouldn't be able to find anyone to wake her, may it be a peasant or a prince. He asked help from his people about this and an intelligent girl came up to him and said, King Elliot, for the person to try to wake the princess up, there will be one fourth chance for her to wake. The second time around, the possibility will be reduced by half and so will become only one eighth of a chance. This will go on infinitely for as long as there is someone who can wake her. The possibility getting smaller and smaller as more people try. The king then asked his people, How big, if so, is the possibility that my daughter won't ever even wake up? The wise thought of the kingdom said that the possibilities must be added up in order to find out the probability of anyone waking the princess before they can find out the probability of no one waking her up. But before solving the king's conundrum, let's tackle something else first. In the problem, we are needed to find the sum of an infinite geometric sequence which consists of the possibilities of each man who will try to wake up the princess. The sum of an infinite geometric sequence is referred to as an infinite geometric series. What are infinite geometric series? Infinite geometric series are basically a geometric series Although it goes infinitely, an infinite geometric series converges if the absolute value of the common ratio r is less than 1. Otherwise, it diverges. Its general form is written as a sub 1 plus a sub 1 r plus a sub 1 r squared and so on, where a sub 1 is the first term and r is the common ratio. Though it may seem impossible, the sum of the sequence can be determined although the condition that the sequence will converge. If so, the sum will be equal to a sub 1 all over 1 minus r. Now let's get into practice. For our first example, we need to find the sum 3, plus 1, plus 1 over 3, plus 1 over 9, and so on. But before solving that, remember that in geometric sequences, each term is derived by multiplying a constant to the previous term that can be written as r equals a sub 2 over a sub 1 equals a sub 3 over a sub 2 equals a sub 4 over a sub 3 and so on by substituting the values we know we were able to verify that the sequence is indeed geometric and we were able to identify as well our common ratio which is one third. But wait, we have to make sure that the series is converging. We can do this by checking if the absolute value of r is less than 1. The absolute value of one third is less than 1. Thus, the series is converging, meaning the sum can be determined. By now, we already have enough data to find the sum. By substituting the values of a sub 1 and r which are 3 and 1 3rd respectively to the formula to get s sub n, s sub n equals a sub 1 all over 1 minus r, we will be able to arrive to the answer of s sub n equals 9 over 2. Now let's have a challenge. Ever wonder the math behind repeating decimals? like 0 0.9999 well use what we've learned in our infinite geometric series to express 0 0.878787 and so on as a fraction in lowest term have you figured out how yet well if you haven't here's how we did it 0 0.87878787 and so on can actually be written as 0 
plus 0.0087 plus 0.00087 and so on. Notice something? This is actually an infinite geometric series. Now we can apply what we've learned. First, we have to make sure that the series is converging. The absolute value of the common ratio r is less than 1. Now that we know it is converging, we can substitute the values to the formula. The first term is 0 0.87 and the ratio is 0 0.01. Simplifying, we get S sub N equals 29 over 33. Great! Go ahead, use your calculator to check. Now that we're done practicing, let's get to the king's request. There are an infinite number of people who could possibly wake Princess Avery up. And so with the first person having the probability of a 1 fourth a chance, and the second person having a probability of 1 8 a chance, and so on, what is the probability that Princess Avery won't be woken up at all? First, we have to find the probability of anyone waking her up. Then, we subtract that from 1 to get the opposite. According to the addition rule 1 of probability, when two or more events A, B, C, and so on are interdependent, the probability that either of all will occur is the sum of all the possibilities. Thus, in this case, we just add the terms of the geometric sequence 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth, and so on. This will be an infinite geometric series. So first, we check if the absolute value of the common ratio R is less than 1. We can get r by dividing a sub 2 by a sub 1. This will give us an r of 1 half. The absolute value of 1 half is less than 1. Thus, we can proceed. Like the other problems, let's substitute our known values to the formula. By doing so, we arrive to the answer of s sub n equals 1 half. But don't forget, we have to subtract 1 half from 1 to get the probability that no one will wake her up. 1 minus 1 half is 1 half. Thus, there's a 50% chance that the Princess Avery will sleep forever. 1 half? That's quite a big chance. I'm worried. So the days passed, and every single time someone tried to wake the Princess up, it was to no avail. Until one came, the one they call Prince Emma, who lowered down and gave the princess a gentle kiss on the lips and woke her up. He became her suitor and she fell in love with him. And the days passed again, and the prince asked for Princess Avery's hand in marriage. She said yes, and all was well, and they all lived happily ever after. The end.